What's happening, beautiful people? Donnie Metro Pixel here for another review of The Seven Deadly Sins, episode three of season one. Let's get right into it, shall we? So first off, the whole overview of the episode is Meliodas and Elizabeth and Hawk travel to the Forest of White Dreams, which is a foggy, dense forest where even the Holy Knights avoid. And happening pretty much the whole forest are the prankster imps, which harbor shape-shifting abilities that confuse the travelers by impersonating their companions. After pretty much defeating the prankster imps, they find a giant girl asleep in the forest who introduces herself as Diane, or, well, it's pronounced Deanne in the anime, a member who is of the Seven Deadly Sins, who pretty much possesses the uh, serpent sin of envy, declaring her crush on Meliodas. This surprise reunion is soon interrupted when Gil Thunder arrives, binding all of them with his lightning and magic and facing Meliodas in a one-on-one -on -one fight where the latter is a dealt a severe injury. Under the pretense of dying, he, quote, he acquires information about the whereabouts of the two members of the deadly sins, Ban and King, as his apparent last wish was tracing their locations to the base dungeon and the capital of the dead, respectively. Okay, so first off, here are some things, first of all, that I didn't like about this episode. Like, first of all, it's short as hell, but we'll get into that later. I can realize how annoying Hawk is going to be throughout the whole series. I swear to God, that's number one. That's number two. And my only issue with Deanne is really... In, a perspective of how women should view men nowadays. If Deanne's goal was to really get the seven deadly sins back together, shouldn't that be her main focus? I'm just saying, no go ahead and apologize for going off on him that you overreacted. Yeah. Second thing that I didn't like about well, third thing, I mean, that I didn't like about the episode. <clears throat> like, Elizabeth, is you Elizabeth, are you for real? Did you not even see the look in Gil Thunder's eyes when he plugged up that damn village and backed up the water supply? Of course he did. Why would you say that he wouldn't do anything like that? I understand that you knew him back in the day, but come on, man. People change throughout. Oh, and lastly, what's with the back and forth with Meliodas and Gil Thunder saying, oh, I could have killed you if I wanted to. Oh, I could kill you too. Oh. I would have ended you too. Just do it already. Sheesh. I think that's more of a filler though, but whatever. Here are the things that were kind of interesting. It's only a few, but they were interesting to me. I guess if being perverted is one way to find the real Elizabeth through all those doppelgangers and the prankster imps, then Meliodas is pretty much the real MVP for that one. But Deanne pretty much let it be known that Melio Lotus was a womanizer. He pretty much just put that man on blast. Fight for your man. <laughs> I guess. And pretty much the other thing that I actually like is the fact that as flamboyant as Gil Thunder looks, I gotta say his armor does look pretty lit. Like that thing look that thing looks it looks good. <clears throat> so I like that. And pretty much the biggest important thing that caught my attention and that could be interesting throughout the series is the words, I am sorry, Captain. Those words were pretty much the words that led to a lot more mysteries throughout the series. The fact that those were the words that Meliodas could only remember through the flashback pretty much raises a lot of questions such as was it Gil Thunder's father who said that or what ties into that pretty much. I guess we'll just find out. Pretty much overall the episode was sort of interesting. At least you get to know one of the sins that Deanne and most importantly, the uh, backstory of Meliodas training Gil Thunder. I just wish this episode wasn't very short. Like, as it cuts to the end of the battle between Meliodas and Gil Thunder, 
it just cuts to the credits. Like, I mean, there could have been more that could have prolonged through the episode. You didn't have to really cut it. And overall, that's pretty much my whole review of the of the episode. And I just hope it'll get somewhere throughout the series. If you like, hit that like, comment, or subscribe to the Rise Crack Nations for where your source is pretty much everything, and I mean everything, nerd related.